What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. He is alive today. Amen. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of God, to be among other believers as a family, to lift up the name of Jesus. We were once in darkness, but his light penetrated. Amen. We were once without hope, but now we have hope. Our sin was great, but his love was greater, and it covers all sins, and it makes us whole. So let us stand this morning. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Let's exalt him, and once more this week, let's remember his sacrifice that we just celebrated last weekend. That blood that was shed with every drop that, was, that brought our healing, that brought our salvation, that brought us life, that brought us hope. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you this morning that you are in this place, God. That you don't just dwell in a building, Jesus. That you don't just dwell in a temple, Lord. That through your Holy Spirit now that you dwell inside of us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here, that you move in this place, that you have a purpose and a plan for us. God, for our existence, for us being here today. Lord, that you want to speak with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was shed, God, for our life, Jesus, to give us hope, to prosper, Jesus. Lord, we worship you today. We honor your name, Lord. What a beautiful name it is, Jesus. We exalt you today. Lord, we lift up our hands and we praise you, God. Lord, we give you not just lip service, God, but that it comes from the depths of our hearts, Jesus. We honor you today. Lord, and we give you glory and we thank you for everything. Amen.
praise you this morning, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have the sweetest name above all names, Lord. We love you. We bless you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. Jesus. 
his blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest friend but only trust in Jesus see it again my hope my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, Jesus, that through whatever situation, Lord, that you hold us, God, that you hold our lives, Jesus. Lord, you hold us and you carry us through, God, through every storm in our life, Jesus. You are the cornerstone, God, that everything is built upon. Jesus, we thank you for your kingdom that is in our lives, Jesus, that you are alive today, God, as you were before. Lord Jesus, that you continue to do great works, Jesus, today in our world as you did in your days as you walked this world, God. 
And we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we believe in you, God. We believe in you, Jesus. Lord, that you came, that you died. Lord God, and that you are alive today. We give you glory. Jesus, we honor you this morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready to give. And as we do, I'd like to share a quick testimony. Um, last weekend, we had a phenomenal weekend. We had our, we had our, um, our concert, and we had a great turnout. And, you know, um, when Jesus sent out his disciples once, and they came back to him, and they were started telling him all the great things and the miracles that they've witnessed and that they were driving out demons and they were saying, Jesus, can you believe this? The demons listen to us. And what did Jesus say to them? He says, don't be so excited about the fact that you can cast out demons, but be excited that your name is written in the book of life. And I wanna say a quick testimony. Last Saturday, we had a person that decided to place their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. That's a huge testimony. The Bible says that the whole, all of heaven rejoices over one person that gets saved rather than 99 people that don't want to get saved. So today and last week and all of heaven was rejoicing. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that participated, that took an active part in being a witness of Jesus Christ. You know, this happens when people get saved. This is because of you. This is something that you do. You're allowing the Holy Spirit, allowing Jesus to move through you. And sometimes we feel like, hey, I wasn't on the stage. I wasn't singing. You know, I made me, I wasn't shaking hands. I wasn't greeting. I wasn't talking to people. But as you finance, as you contribute your tithe, and as you give, you allow the church and you allow the Holy Spirit to work through his people to reach people for his kingdom. So you just take an active part as well, just as anybody on the stage, an active part in reaching out people. So thank you for that. And if you're here, yeah, give God some praise. <laughs> give God some praise. That's exciting. When people get saved. And the point is, you know, somebody said, well, you know, how many people actually showed up to church the next day? You know, the point is not to bring people to church. The point is to win people for Jesus, to bring Jesus into somebody's life. And so that one person got saved, that's exciting. And that should ignite our heart to go out and to do more, to seek out more for God's kingdom. That's awesome. So if you're here this morning, and if you're new, and you're wondering what we're all about, our vision that God has placed and the purpose that God has placed on this church is to reach out to our community, to bring Jesus into every home that's outside of here, to bring God's light and to bring God's life. That's the main goal, and that's what we're here for. So as you give, that's what you contribute to, to bringing and to spreading the name of Jesus through this city. So thank you, guys. If you'd like to get connected with us, feel free to get connected with us. Fill out a card or come up after service, talk to any one of the ushers or any of the leaders, we'd be more than happy to get you connected to this. This is an awesome thing to be involved with. So as we give, give God some praise for salvation that came into somebody's life this past weekend. That's awesome. So, Father, we thank you so much. Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Jesus, that we're able to be your vessels in this world, that you are able to use us the way we are, Lord, with all our quirks, Lord Jesus, with all the issues that we have, Lord, that you don't look any differently upon us, Jesus, that your love does not change for us as we live our lives, God. Whether we're at the top or at, whether we're at the bottom, Jesus, you still continue to love us the same, and you still continue to use us, Jesus, for your glory. Father, I thank you for that one life, Jesus, for that one life that was able to be, come, to be taken away from the kingdom of darkness, Jesus, and to be brought into the kingdom of your light, God. Lord, we thank you. We raise up that person, Jesus, their heart, God. Lord, your light to be 
the light of their path, Jesus. So they would follow you, Jesus, walk in your steps, Father God. Lord, that you would mentor them, that you would teach them and speak to them, Father God. Lord, we ask for your blessing to come into that person's life, Jesus, so that as they go into their home, that they can be your light in their home and in their community, Father. Lord, and I thank you for every person that took part in that event, Jesus, and for every person that comes here every Sunday and takes part to spread your name, God to bring your word into this town. Jesus, I bless every single person, Lord. And I pray for every person, Jesus, that has a desire to serve you, Lord, but doesn't know how to express themselves. Jesus, I pray that you would give us the wisdom and give them the wisdom and knowledge how to express themselves to bring your light into their world wherever they are, Father. Lord, I pray for every person that gives, Jesus, that you would bless them even more abundantly, Father God, that it would pour over Jesus so they would speak of the glory and the good works that you do in their life, God. Lord, we thank you and we glorify you in everything. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. I have a couple announcements for you before we go into the word. First announcement. If anybody wants to get baptized, fantastic opportunity. Now is better than ever. Today is your day, all right? So if you wanna get baptized, wanna serve Jesus, feel free to come up after service. We're more than happy to talk to you. Um, um, regarding teens camp, registration is open for teens camp for any teens, um, ages 11 to 15. And volunteers as well, if you'd like to participate, if you'd like to get involved with the teens camp, you're able to register with Mr. Andre right here. Andre, please raise your hand. So this is Andre, you may register with him. Um, School of Worship, we've been announcing it for a little while, starting May 1st. So if you'd like to get involved with School of Worship, um, that's also ages 11 and up. Does it matter your age group? Does it matter your um, talent level? Um, however, however high you are, if you'd like to get involved in a worship team, if you're, you know, these guys, a lot of them came out from School of Worship, and now they're here, and they're worshiping God. So that is fantastic. If you'd like to grow in music, or in worship, or find out what worship actually is, feel free to join us. We're going to be starting May 1st. You can come up to me after service, so I can give you more information on that. Um, next weekend, April 30th, we're having students from SMBS uh, from Jack Jacksonville, Florida. It's a Bible college. There's gonna be about 70 students that are coming up here. So a bunch of youth. So come next Sunday. They will be ministering to us as well here in both services in English and in Russian. So definitely come, get to know some people. It'll be awesome. And May 20th, we're having a couple's night. So if you're a couple, you're married, it's a good thing, you don't wanna miss it. Last year we had a great time, it was awesome. So, um, and right now, David, I'm gonna invite him, he's gonna be speaking our word today from God as he comes up and gets ready. Turn to your neighbor, bless your neighbor. If you don't know somebody, get to know their name, at least, and then meet them after service. Yeah, let's say hello to a few people. We're going to have a good time today, this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to have a good time. Immediately, somebody was like, okay, you know. You brighten somebody's mood right away. Um... I wanna talk this morning about sustaining our growth. Sustaining your growth, your personal growth, um, your growth in ministry, and your growth as a person. You know, it's, it's very easy to get started, and it's really awesome to jump into like an opportunity in front of you, but the difficulty is always sustaining that growth. It's always, you know, if, for those who might budget, it's if you don't budget, you're not gonna have money at the end of the day in your bank account because anybody can earn money, anybody can get a paycheck, but it's the people that know how to manage that paycheck, that know how to use that paycheck, you know, week by week. And growth is the same thing. 
um, in this church even, and wherever we are, um, we want to sustain growth, right? Turn to your neighbor and say, I want to sustain my growth. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I want to sustain my growth. And somebody without neighbors, um, somebody go be a neighbor to them next time we say that. Um, we want to sustain our growth. Last year, I, I just finished my taxes like many of you. April 18th, we got a few more days, praise God. It was a little extension. Um, I finished my taxes and I had to tally up how much miles I drove in 2016. Um, I drove 23,000 miles on my car in 2016. For some of you youth road trippers, you know, you're, that, you probably are like at 40,000 miles on your car. Um, but 23,000 miles, I, I calculated it. If for those who, we all know how far Amherst is, right? Amherst. It's, it's as if I drove to Amherst every single day there and back for an entire year, every single day. That will wear your car out, you know? A lot of our vehicles always need maintenance. Um, some of you change your oil every 3,000 miles. Some of you don't change your oil every, you don't change your oil, you know? It's usually either your parents start, for those who still live at home, um, your dad ends up changing and it's like black and you can't see anything through it. It's not a good sign when it's black. Um, and sometimes we're in a storm, we knew we should have changed our windshield wipers, but it so happens we're in a storm and one of our wipers gets lost on the highway and it's pouring. In Massachusetts, you know, we have zero visibility sometimes and it's that day when you lose a wiper and you can't see anything. Our vehicles require so much maintenance. Um, one, more, one more turn to your neighbor and tell somebody to change their oil. Change your oil today, check your wipers, um, top off the fluids. You guys thought you were coming to a sermon, but you came to Vehicle Maintenance 101. <laughs> right. So, windshield wipers, changing your oil, topping your fluids, um, changing your brakes, those are very all important items. Igor can let you know, if, if you guys see Igor, he'll let you know if I missed anything after. Um, he can actually give you the full course of what to do. But, and with every year, we like to push the limits with our cars. I know that somehow I hope I won't have to do anything to the car for as long as possible. But you know that sooner or later you do, or you will be stuck in that storm. You know, you won't see a car fanatic stuck on the highway when it's pouring with no windshield wipers. Somebody else might see you if you don't take care of your vehicle. Because for car fanatics, their vehicle, it's like a moral responsibility to take care of it, right? Everybody, ha I mean, maybe you're a car fanatic. Um, you take care of your vehicle. That is the proper way to do it. There's another vehicle that is us as people. And we, as we grow, we need maintenance. We need to take care of our soul. We need to make sure we're healthy. You as a person need to make sure you're healthy as you grow. Because as you grow, you're gonna start seeing things break down if you don't have the proper maintenance, taking care of yourself. And I would even say this goes to your personal growth and it also goes to even as a church. Every person in this room, the success of, of this congregation, of this community depends on your personal success first. You know, if you come in here and you're not a health, and you're not healthy, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able, it's like when they say contribute to society. You know, when you get a job, they, a lot of times they ask you, what are you gonna contribute to this program, like to this nursing program? What are you gonna consider, you're applying for school, what are you gonna contribute? And you always think of something really smart that you don't really have, but you think, you know, I'll contribute, I'll contribute something, you know? And in, in the church, it's the same way. It's, it's, this place is a place to serve each other, it's to serve people, like Alex said. It's to serve this community, and it's to serve one another as well. And that can only happen when the members are healthy. And so it's so important for us, even as we're involved in ministry, or wherever you're involved, maybe you're, you fit in a category where you're not involved yet, but you're keeping your options open. Uh, maybe you've been serving, but you've gotten tired, and you're, not, and you're just stagnant, you're not as excited, something happened. Um, or maybe you're serving, and everything's great, and you're growing. But I want to put us through a little test today, five things that we can grade ourselves 
am I taking care of myself? Because if out of these five things, you don't have one, or you're not doing well in one, it's gonna be affecting your growth. And what's important is to learn that sometimes you as a person need to make sure you're, you're pacing yourself according to how well you're taking care of yourself. And when I go into these five points, you'll know what I mean. First, let's open to, let's open to um, three John. Three John. I'll give you a moment to get there. Three John verse one, or chapter one. Chapter uh, 3 John, it's not the book of John, 3 John, it's a little later, it's right before Jude and Revelation for those of you following along. Um, the best way actually to always look it up is I used to, um, you just, in, in the beginning there's a, there's a table of contents and it just brings you right to the page. Sometimes if you have a hard time like finding the, the, bio, the specific book, it'll help you. And then with time, you'll be like so quick, your friends are gonna be looking at you. You're not reading necessarily the Bible, you just know the table of contents really well. Um, so chapter one, verse three. For I rejoice greatly when you brothers came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. And then verse two, right before it says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as as thy soul prospers. We could get NIV up there if we could, but um, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And then he continues, I rejoice greatly when you, got, when you came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. In order to walk in this truth, in order to continue to grow, your soul needs to prosper. You need to be, people are not drawn to sad people or depressed people or people are drawn to happy people. Um, people, we all have a soul that needs to be taken care of. And um, let's start with the first maintenance item. And if you're taking notes or if you're not taking notes, take notes today. I want you to write it down in your iPhones or your Androids or a notebook. The first maintenance item is having mentors in your life. Having a mentor in your life. In order for you to continue to grow, or you, you might have been stuck somewhere, or, or you got stuck and you were growing, but you got stuck, one of these five items will answer your question. In order to grow, you need mentors in your life. You need people in your life that are over you, that will speak into your life and that will push you, check this out, that will push you into greater things. This person or these people in your life need to be people that encourage you. They're not people that tell you what you're doing wrong, they're people that tell you what you're doing right. Because when people praise you, guess what it does to a person? It makes them wanna do even better. That's what happens. No matter how you think you, you know, people are delegate. When you tell somebody, you did a wonderful job in this, you're good at this, continue, your voice was, you sang so well today. That makes that person want to sing even better. It's, it's a psychological thing. You tell somebody they're beautiful, they, number one, they believe they're beautiful. <laughs> and number two, they're going to feel confident. It changes, it changes their mind about how they look at themselves, about how they think. When a person is put down or criticized, it, it, may, it may do something. It may tell them, hey, you need to fix this area and this area, and there's a place for that. But I would say five to one, if you're praising them, and then yeah, you, you can give them a strong, firm rebuke or something and from the proper heart, but you need to be praising people more than you're rebuking people, right? Turn to somebody, and, uh, give me a compliment. Turn to somebody and say, give me a compliment. 
I gotta stop doing that. I just get in that habit, and uh, we're gonna be turning to each other all day. Number two. Number two. Or we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait a second. I'll, I'll, number one's my, kind of very important. Just like wipers, windshield wipers, they give clarity, right? They give clarity when you're, where you're looking, where you're driving. Um, mentors in your life will sharpen you and give you perspective on life. You can get so stuck on what you think, and if there's nobody above you in your life that you look up to to point things out and call things out as they are from an outside perspective, then you're not gonna have clarity. Sometimes you need to see a different perspective. And only people you trust will, will be able to say that to you. Because sometimes your circle of friends are gonna be too afraid to tell you what, the truth. You need mentors that will speak over you and be like, hey man, I know everybody's telling you you're good at this, but it's, you're not that good at it, you know what I mean? Like something even raw and real like that. Um, but clarity is so important for us to have and to be sharpened like iron. I told my, um, and last point about praising people, we'll just jump back to that. I told my five-year-old niece once that she, she always likes to pretty herself up and look like a doll. You know, it's this new thing, I guess. A gl- <laughs> I don't know, it's, 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 it's in girls. And she, she came over and she's carrying this purse. She has glitter on her eyes, she has glitter on her hair. There's glitter everywhere. Um, and she's just like looking all fancy. And I, I just took a moment, I was just like, wow, Emily, you look so good. Like, wow, show me your purse. Show, show me what else you got in there. Um, and I'm just like pointing all these things out. And usually she's not one that just like, I don't know, pay, like follows you around. But after I pointed all this out, all of a sudden I noticed this girl would not stop following me for like an hour. And people will do the same thing when you, when you make them feel attractive, when you praise them when you make them feel special, when you bring the beauty out of them, people want to follow you, okay? Some of you are like, you know, so in your life, you want people to respect you and look up to you and ask you for more advice, it's gonna be how you treat them. It's gonna be how you respect them. How, how much gold can you draw out of them, okay? And so, maintenance item number one is uh, mentors. Number two, you're all looking at me, but you should be getting ready to write it down. Number two is um, have fun. Wherever you are, you need to learn not to take yourself too seriously. Um, when, you're, when you're just a serious person, people, people feel tense around you. It's like sometimes we're like, well, I just, or somebody might be like, I can't connect to people. It's because you're like a pillar. You just stand there and people walk around you and life moves around you. People don't like to talk to stones. People, have you talked to stones before? People don't know how to talk to stones. And so it's part of your job as a person to be able to put yourself out there, to step out of your comfort zone. Because sometimes we're not growing because we're not, we're not understanding I have to put myself out there. I have to, I have to bend this mold, okay? Because people might, you might feel like it's people's jobs to bring you out of that mold. At the end of the day, it's nobody's job to do, you, do anything for you. It's your job. It's your job to step out. God gave you a will. God gave you a uh, personality. And, and you have to believe all that about yourself and break that mold. When you begin to break that mold, people begin to, you, you begin to, I, I wanna say, um, you're able to grow. If you don't step out of your shell, you're not gonna grow. You can grow to a certain extent, but then if you're stuck, you know, you have all the tools and you just don't wanna step out. Uh, that that you, can, you can look at yourself and um, understand that maybe I'm not growing because I'm not stepping out of my shell, okay? Because it's, it's time for you to stretch. It's time for you to stretch. And don't be afraid to stretch. Um, and if you're afraid to stretch, go back to your mentor in maintenance night number one. Go back to your mentor and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not confident enough in this. And that mentor, their job is to give you, is also to speak life, and speak um, encouragement into you so you have that courage, okay? People from item one are not meant to discourage you, they're meant to give you courage, okay? So when you get that courage, you're able to begin to step out. That's growth item or maintenance item number two. 
Number three, probably the most important item that you can do for yourself and the, the it's major thing is relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with God. Um, and I wanna slow us down here for a moment and just say everything in your life depends on your relationship with him, everything. This, your ministry in church, if, if you find yourself in a place I guarantee you, if you are not interacting with Jesus, you're not gonna, you're gonna stop growing. I know you feel like you, you're pushing yourself up there, but if at home things are not right with God and you're not with God, you're gonna stop. There's gonna come a point. You know what usually happens in that moment is you grow, you grow to an extent, and then get, it's not that you stay there, you begin to go down. And so we all wanna be people that grow and sustain it and stay and continue to grow. We don't wanna be people that, oh, we got this far and then all of a sudden I start, you start losing. You start to, um, you know, lower, get, get lower on that level. And relationship with Jesus is like, it's really like topping your fluids. Unless I'm wrong, I don't, you barely have to top your fluids in a vehicle. It usually stays at an appropriate amount um, sometimes, and you still do, you still wanna check, um, but you usually don't have to do that. And because if it dips lower than the minimum, you're in trouble. If the fluids in your vehicle dip lower than the minimum, you're in trouble. And with relationship in Jesus, if, if it's like up and down and you're dipping lower, there's gonna, there's gonna be tension in your growth. You're gonna notice you're not growing because relationship with Jesus is not meant to be up and down, up and down. It has to be consistent for you to grow, okay? It's for you to be able to grow, relationship with Jesus has to be consistent. Okay, number four. Psalm 77, 11. One last passage. If we could put it up. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will remember your works. To be able to continue to grow, you need to be remembering what God has been doing in your life. You need to be able to reflect on what God has been doing in your life. If you've come, wherever you've come to a point, the easiest way to almost bring your, give yourself that courage is to stop, close your eyes and reflect what has God spoken to me in the past? Maybe you stopped believing. So maybe you started doubting something that all, you've always believed. That God was saying, hey, I'm going to move you in this direction or in this ministry. Or I'm going to give you this career. Maybe you were in a place where you're like, okay, you felt like God was speaking to you. But then something happened. You need to understand when we have these moments of doubt or all of a sudden you don't have that faith. I believe as a Christian, if you have that, that's just God reminding you, run to Jesus. Run to what he has done in your life before. Because it's never gonna become, I've come, it's never gonna come to that point where you say, okay, I've, I've arrived. And I'm on my, and, and I'm here. And like, I'm, I'm good, I'm independent, I can do it. No, that, you never come to that point. It's always, I'm walking with Jesus. He's telling me what he can do in my life. I'm remembering what he did in the past. I'm remembering the prophecy spoken over me. I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I re I'm remembering what he spoke in my prayer closet with him. You begin to remember the past. And that's what this verse is talking about. We remember his works. The whole purpose of communion is remembering what he did for us. That's how powerful it is. Jesus basically said this you continue to do for the rest of your life because it's a symbol of remembering. Memory is powerful. Notice that your memory is usually, it, it triggers your emotions. It triggers everything you think. It will trigger what you think. And a lot of times we have all these thoughts. If you simply begin to um, shelf them properly, you're gonna be able to see why do you think the way you think? Why do you feel the way you feel right now in this moment? After you leave service, why do you have those emotions? They are linked to something in your memory. They're linked to what you're, what's in your thoughts. And Jesus tells us, if you will simply look back and remember what I've been doing in your life. Because maybe right now you're not, you, you don't have, God's not, you're not, you haven't landed a new revelation. Or maybe you need help or you need courage. Jesus tells us how to do it. 
go back and remember what he's, what he's doing in your life. Um, and that simply comes with close your eyes and reflect. Put the brakes on. You know, put the brakes on. Because if you're going too fast and you think like, well, you know, I'm going through this growth. <clears throat> Sooner or later, if your brakes are not good and you're not able to reflect, that's where you start feeling independent. But independence is not going to... It's not going to keep going you up. Because with pride, a man falls. And falls very quickly. People that rise quickly, a lot of times they fall very quickly. And we can be a people, you can be a person that sustains your growth. You know, I don't think any person in this room wants to be, maybe you're involved in a ministry, wants to be so involved and in, in kind of realizing you're wasting your time if you're not sustaining it. If you're not, if you're not following these five things, and most importantly, being relationship with Jesus, it's, you're not gonna sustain your growth. You're not gonna, sooner or later, you're gonna burn out. Sooner or later, you're not gonna wanna, you're not, just not gonna wanna do it. Because <clears throat> there's core things that need to be present in your life. There's, core, there's specific maintenance items that need to be happening inside of you for you to be able to grow. So this is, although this is maintenance, it's also a formula for growth. A formula for growth. Jesus said, I'm not going to turn there to that passage, but we, there's a passage, passage that said, uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he was saying, <clears throat> you, you go out and you promote yourself. And you fast and you do it publicly. You pray and you do it publicly. But Jesus says, the man who prays in secret, I will exalt him. The man who spends, if you spend time with me, Jesus is saying, I will exalt you. I will promote you. In other words, you're going to grow. Relationship with Jesus, it has a direct relationship to growing. You begin to grow. Okay? Even though mentors are important, um, reflecting on what God has done in our life, all these things are important. But again, it starts with that relationship. And consistently. And we're almost down to the last, last one. Maintenance five. <clears throat> do you go, this is a test for yourself, do you go to a weekly, bi-weekly, I would, <clears throat> I would stay away from monthly, that's good too, but it needs to be more consistent, small group. Do you go to a weekly or bi-weekly small group? It is so vital for your growth to be connected with other people. It's so vital. Right now, what, what is happening is we're having service, but you're just sitting and listening to me. You're not actually fellowshipping. You're not actually opening up. You could be closed for all I know. You know, you could, your heart could be completely sealed off right now. But through small group, you're, giving out, you're, you're in a place where you be, you're more prone to open up to people. Um, and a, a, a huge thing for small group too is honestly it keeps you humble because if, if, if you're growing let's say and if you're going and you're getting somewhere and you're not actually sharing anything with, with other people in that intimate way, everything's in your head. You have, you know, it's, it's, it's very dangerous to get things stuck in your head without releasing them, number one, you know, without, without releasing them and also receiving other people's perspectives and receiving what other people are speaking. Because if any one person is too independent, um, it's almost like you, you don't belong on earth anymore because God created all of us and he speaks through every single person. And honestly, people become too independent when they're alone. They become, they, you know, you move away to college, you move away to a big city, you become super independent. It's, also, it's good but it also causes you to be on your own. You think every thought that you have, you have ownership of. You don't have outside uh, contribution into your life. And so small groups are so important. A support system. Um, is it easy? It's no. You need to just understand that if you want to sustain your growth, you need to be connected to people. Paul, uh, scripture again writes, and I'll you know, just, just pointing it out, you can look it up later, is don't neglect getting together. And the first church, a lot of times, they got together through small groups. They met at houses. So whether it, it, whether even if it be in this building, 
But you need to be in a place where you're in direct contact with people. You're in a place of direct contact with other believers. And it, it may take sacrifice on your part, it might take time. But I wanna tell you that a year from now, unless you don't really, unless you're not really looking to grow, a year from now, that's, that's, that sacrifice and time you make to be connected to other people will change you as a person. It will, it will change you as a person. You will be much further than you are. And I wanna say in five years time, if you're following and, and making sure you're being taken care of and you're take, connected to people, you're gonna be growing. But there's, but a lot of times what begins to happen, whether in ministry or anywhere else, um, people are not taking care of their soul. And, and, and that could be as simple as having fun. Because like sometimes you, you can get into a pattern where you come to a church and it's all it is for you is a tradition or it's just a ministry for you, but you don't know like, it's not life to you anymore. Church needs to be a place where you receive life, where people are lifting you up, where people are giving you courage. You need to be able to leave this place and, and have more courage than you came here with. Amen? Turn to somebody, one last one, and tell them, um, you choose. Tell them, give them, <laughs> I won't put you guys through that. Um, you need to have courage when you leave a church in this place. And um, that's why we as people, it's our, it's our role, and as a community, it's our job to do that. Um, we're gonna conclude right now. We're gonna do one more worship song. Um, wasn't worship awesome this morning? That was good. That was really good. And, and I think right now will be a moment for us to close in worship and, and reflect. Use this time to reflect on what God is doing in your life. Um, we all wanna grow together. If, let this, Make this a test for yourself a little bit today. It's kind of like a grading how well you're taking care of yourself. Again, because it can be exciting to get started, but it's more important that you're there tomorrow than what you started today, that you're there tomorrow. Um, and lastly, uh, ministry is, the point of ministry is to bring people from point A to point B. Everything we do, every service, every event, the purpose should always be are people growing and are people going from one level to the next in what I'm doing, okay? And now check this out. That's the goal of ministry, but at the center of ministry are people. And people, Bible says, let your soul prosper. You need to be taken care of. You need to be healthy to do ministry, okay? You're not perfect, but Relationship with Jesus doesn't, doesn't tell you you're perfect. It tells you that you depend on someone, you know? It, it, it says that I'm depending on Jesus and this is my walk with God. And you never think I'm perfect. You actually realize how flawed you are. And ministering to people is just telling, giving them courage now because you are full of courage. Because you are taking care of yourself. So let's, let's, let's um, pay very close attention to not have that lack lack of mentors, lack of community in our lives, that lack of relationship with Jesus, because your growth, I will tell you, is, is stopped somewhere because if, if those five things are not being met. Your growth is stopped somewhere. So pick mentors that, you know, you will only go as far as your mentors. So make sure you, you're changing them often and you're increasing the bar. You know, it's not meant, this is my mentor for life and that's it. Jesus is your mentor for life. But people in our life, you can, you can raise the bar. But that just shows that you get to mentor level one. You know, I'm not saying compare, all, what, compare yourself to them, but there's a limit, you know? You are limited by who you look up to. You're limited by the friends you have. You're limited. And so some of you really have to reflect, who am I hanging out with? Because you are limited to that group. You're limited to that group. And so I, I challenge you, if you wanna grow, you wanna sustain your growth, get around people that will encourage you. Get rid of negativity in your life. Once you get to heaven, promise you, there will be absolutely no negativity in heaven. And, I, and I, you can create that world for yourself almost. There'll still be negativity, but the people that you trust, you need to surround yourself with people that will speak courage into your life. So let's stand up. 
We're going to let the worship team sing right now. If you need prayer for anything, just come up during worship to, the, to this altar call. We'll pray for you. It doesn't have to be an altar call or a salvation. You might just need prayer with, over something. You just might need help with something. So we have this time right now we can pray with you. So let's just worship. Close your eyes, lift your hands up, and just dedicate this time right now.
Jesus, for this word that you speak to us, God. Lord, help us find those people and surround us with those people, Father God, that are going to push us and encourage us, Lord, to move forward, to grow, to get better at whatever we're doing, Jesus. And even if there's things that we need to change in our lives, Father God, that we would not be offended, Lord Jesus, by correction, Father God, but that we would be open, Jesus, to receive your word, Father God, to move forward, Jesus, to grow in you, Father, to become better people, God, to become more like you, Jesus, like what you've called us to do, Father. Jesus, we glorify you this morning. We honor you, Jesus, for your presence here, God, for your word, Jesus. Father God, for working in our lives. Lord, we glorify you, and we honor you for this awesome time that we've had together, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Give God glory. Amen. Amen. Our God is awesome. Our God is awesome. Uh, quick announcement tonight at 6 o'clock. We're having everybody that's involved in any ministry in this church, whether it is kids, ushers, greeters, worship, audio, video, lighting, wherever you are in any ministry in this church, if you volunteer tonight, there is a prayer at 6 o'clock. Last month, we had a phenomenal time. It was awesome. So tonight, please come. You don't want to miss it. So if you know somebody that's not here and you know that they're involved, drag them here, all right? Bring them here. And also, another thing I forgot to mention earlier in two weeks, uh, we're gonna be having a church tag sale, raising funding uh, for other different events that are gonna be happening this summer. So if you'd like to participate, that would be awesome. But other than that, may the Lord bless you and keep you and protect you and guide you this rest of your week. You guys are blessed. Okay, all right, you guys are dismissed, good to go.